Uh, in the past, our Sky News has learned that Japanese car manufacturer Honda preparing to announce the closure of its factory in Swindon, dealing a devastating blow to its 3,500 strong workforce, 3,500 people likely to lose their jobs when the factory closes in three years' time. More on that with uh, Ed Conway, who's our economics uh, editor. Hello to you. This is properly devastating stuff. It's, it's a real shock, and I think, you know, four employees of Honda as well who have been asking this um, well, they voted leave by about 54%, okay. so it was quite a strong leave vote. Yeah. So. Your thought on this would be great. Uh, our political editor at Faisal Islam tweeting, saying, uh, a year ago, the Japanese ambassador was in Downing Street. He was unusually candid after a meeting with the PM, uh, with Nissan, Toyota, Honda, others. If there's no profitability of continuing operations in the UK, no private company can continue operations, simple as that. This is all high stakes. All of us need to keep in mind. I think that's right, and I think, you know... The but uh, the news coming from our city editor, Mark Kleiman, that it would appear that Honda is to close its plant in Swindon with a loss of 3,500 jobs. Three years to wind it down. Uh, Home Secretary Sajid Javid is remaining tight-lipped over his plans to deal with schoolgirl Shamima Begum, who fled to Syria to join the Islamic State in 2015 and wants to come back to the United Kingdom. Well, our diplomatic editor, Dominic Waghorn, is here with us. Um, hasn't received any coaching, quite obviously, but she wants to, to come back to the United Kingdom. What happens now? Well, I think there's a lot of debate about whether she should be allowed back, um, but in terms of whether she can be blocked from coming back, it's a much more legal question. At the moment, that kind of emotional beginning to this debate, and we have is sending officials out to meet them and work out how they can get home, for obvious reasons. So she would have to make her own way back. Now, we don't often hear a lot about female pilots, sadly. They are still rare in the industry. One pioneering woman's story, though, is the subject of a new musical. The show looks at the career of Beverly Bass, American Airlines' first female pilot captain who was forced to land her plane in the tiny Canadian town of Gander on the day of the September 11th attacks. Let's take a quick look at the show. Well, the show looks at how the residents of Gander looked after their unexpected visitors, but it also tells the true story of Bass's historic career as a trailblazer for female pilots. Beverly Bass uh, is uh, with us, along with British Airways pilot um, Helen Geary. I'm delighted that I've got two <laughs> female pilots in the studio. We've almost got a quorum, haven't we? Hello, ladies. Hello. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Tell us about 9-11. Happened. Oh gosh, it was a beautiful day. I was uh, scheduled. The weather was gorgeous, wasn't it? As I it was a beautiful day. I was uh, scheduled. The weather was gorgeous, wasn't it? As I it was. It was gorgeous. We were flying from Paris to Dallas, and we were right over the middle of the line pilots. It's always something that we coordinate with our dispatchers when we're going to divert an airplane. So we were ordered to land immediately in Gander. Listening to these sort of stories, I mean, I'm guessing you weren't even a pilot at, at, at that time. No, no, I'd, uh, I was doing some training at that time. I remember it very well, though. I was planning to do a... People who were watching at home to g give them an idea uh, of just how challenging it was. I've been to Gander. It's tiny. <laughs> it's a tiny little place. And yet something like, what, 8,000 people well, came a lot, were there for one night? They had a population of 9,400 people. Yeah, <laughs> always for, for emergency reasons? Yes, yes. OK, don't <laughs> tell that to <laughs> nervous flyer is all I can say. Well, no, the other two were medical. So oh, okay. it wasn't anything to do with the airplane ever. Fantastic, and uh, I love it's my very plane. expensive, though, isn't it, to qualify as a pilot? It can be, but there, there are um, bursaries out there and, uh, you know, that you can apply to uh, to get help.
So there are many options open there to, to finance it however you wish. Is that what you recognise in your... She's exactly right. In the States, it, we say it cost about $50,000 to get your license to be a how many people apply you know it's 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 a well it's a coveted career so i imagine that there are lots of people who aspire to it whether they're male I don't know anything about that so i never thought about it again and 4 years later in the summer of 2015 uh, we were invited to the world premiere opening in la jolla Two female pilots on my sofa and spend some quality time being able to say to young girls out there, this is what you can Absolutely. achieve and it is achievable. Yes, Absolutely. and it's a great career. OK, it's great to talk to both <laughs> of you. I know you're incredibly busy, both of you, so thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join thank me you. on the programme this afternoon. I really, really do appreciate it. So there you go, you see, that's sticking it to the boys, isn't it? <laughs> female pilots, only on average 3% of the industry-wide are female pilots at the moment, 6% at British Airways, which means 94% are men. <laughs> what we need to do is to get those figures up significantly over the course of the next decade. If it's my last breath, I'll do my best <laughs> to try to make that happen. Uh, still to come on the programme, we'll be talking about all today's top stories. Do stay tuned our way here on Sky.